diet, not only the food, but also other joints. So one of the main objectives of this work was a study how Halux limitus, uh, how different treatment affects uh, plantar pressure distribution in patients with Halux limitus. But uh, a first question appears here, here, that is what is already known about it. So before we start our project, we carry out a literature review to find out what information already exists about this topic. We found 28 articles uh, discussing the first rate and plantar pressures. We extracted all the information that's uh, provided by each of the articles found in order to know the limitation of each one of them, the most study variables, as well as the study method that they use in their study. In other on, on the one hand, to be able to provide new knowledge with the implementation of our project, and on the other hand, to know the most frequent methodology and way of working that they use. After all this, we were able to observe that the most studied vari variables were peak pressure, maximum force, contact time between others that you can see in the screen. Uh, that all the articles divided the foot into different areas of, or region of interest, and there isn't any consens consensus here. In addition, we, um, we found that uh, all the, of all the articles found, only three talk about allux limitus or allux rigidus, and the majority talk about allux bulbus. Um, mo and most of the articles study only one condition, that is, they study the functionality of a single type of orthosis for the treatment of this pathology, but they don't compare between other insults to know which is more effective. So we establish two objectives um, of this work due to the limitation that we have found in our, our articles. Uh, first, study the assessed of the, as I said, assess the effectiveness of three, of, three, of three different types of food orthosis in improving the range of motion of halux in patients with halux limitus. A second, assess the effectiveness of three different types of food orthosis in altering the forefoot plantar pressure distribution in patients with halux limitus. So we, are, we have studied three types of orthosis. First, a flat insole, that is orthosis without any element. Then, orthosis with an anterior stabilizer element, which is made of resin and had a rocker effect on its anterior part, so help the patient propulsion. And then, uh, orthotic with a, a kinetic wage. And we established uh, some inclusion and exclusion criteria. criteria. Like inclusion criteria, patients between 18 and, 60 and 65 years with allux limitus, uh, with a positive jack, jack test, and with a foot posture index higher than six. And as, ex as exclusion criteria, patients with neuro neurological, systemic, or orthopedic diseases, the subject who have suffered trauma of the foot and lower limb prior to study, or patients who are unable to walk without AIDS. And we are going to study two types of data. Maybe. <laughs> Biomechanical data. Uh, for that, we are going to use Bicon system. And then plantar pressure data. And we are going to, to, to use a pressure platform for do it. Okay, I'm going to explain a little the methodology that we have used to obtain the data. Uh, the sample size was 25 patients between 30 and 45 years. Uh, and the first step was uh, signed the informant concept. Then the anthrop anthropometric characteristic of the patient was taken. Uh, this uh, characteristic includes, includes the length of the foot, the eighth of the arch in different positions,
Uh, once we have the previous uh, steps, we place all markets at the anatomical landmarks following the Brenning model. This model consists of 19 marks distributed between the foot and ankle, like we can see in the image that it's an example of a real patient. A first measure, measure was taken with the patient in a standard position, and both biomechanical and data related to plantar pressures were taken at the same time. And we measured the patients in four different conditions. First, barefoot, then, then with a shoe with, a insole, uh, with the flat insole inside, and then the shoe and the two different types type of orthosis. Uh, the shoe was a minimalist shoes, like you can see in the image, and uh, this shoe had uh, different holes in these areas where there were reflective markets. The platform will have a specific orientation and, and direction following the protocol described by Sanchez Sales et al. And for obtaining the, the data, the three-step protocol was followed, where the patient third step had to coincide with the pressure plan platform, which was the point where the camera had the best visibility. As we can see in the second image, uh, where uh, I show how we obtain the data about plantar pressure and biomechanics biomechanic data. And in the third image, we can see an example of bicon analysis. So we took 10 samples from each patient, and from this, we, we then used the best five. So we have, tw we have 25 patients, each of them subjected to four different conditions, and five tri trials with each of the conditions. We are currently analyzing the data collected on plantar pressure, and I'm going to explain a little how um, the process is going. From this analysis, uh, we have obtained two types of data. First, zero-dimensional data, in which we study mediolateral displacement and anterior-posterior displacement of the, of the center of pressure. As can be seen in the slide, in the slide for calculates mediolateral displacement, the highest and lowest point of the graph have been taken, and the difference between both points have been obtained to determine these deviations. And for the anterior-posterior displacement, the same methodology was used, but in this case, the most anterior and most posterior point of the graph was taken. Uh, in this way, for each condition and each patient, this displacement has been obtained for five trials. Then the average of them has been calculated to see the displacement of each of the conditions, as you can see in this slide. And then we have uh, obtained uh, one-dimensional data too, in which we compare the waveform of the four different conditions to see if any change occurred in any phase of the guide cycle. Unfortunately, we have not yet been able to perform the analysis of the biomechanical data, and because of time constraints, we are not yet able to show any of the results obtained from this study. But we hope to be able to do it soon. Thanks for your attention.